what's up you guys i'm back with another video and in this video we're going to talk about solidity smart contracts the blockchain and how you can actually go ahead to become a blockchain developer in 2022 so let's get started so basically i was very curious about the blockchain smart contract solidity and ethereum and stuff like that so one fine day on a weekend i actually decided to finally dive in and you know check out solidity and how the smart contract world works because web3 stuff has been viral and trending on twitter and i was very curious about it so i decided to check it out and one of these weekends i did exactly that so i read a bunch of things i tried to build a smart contract i actually did and deployed it on the ethereum network not on the main network but on a test network i'll show you guys in a minute in my laptop but for now i want to give you a quick intro so basically i did all that and I, then i went to twitter and i wrote a whole thread about it on the thread i got a few responses that people didn't really understand and people even reached out to me to make a video about it to explain it better so in this video i'm trying to break down the concepts and make it simpler to understand try to give you a quick summary of how the blockchain works and try to make it as simple as i can for you to understand and if you do understand then let me know in the comments down below that you understood how the blockchain works and how smart contracts work in general so basically if if you're coming from a web background right we, we see all these services like youtube twitter facebook we have a web client which is our front end of the app and we make a request to the back end and back end sort of does its magic and saves the data in a database somewhere and that's how traditional web 2 applications are built right now web 3 is a new paradigm where you replace that back end so there is going to be no back end as such like the ones that we have with twitter you might know about amazon web services and azure and all that basically all these cloud platforms where you rent their computers and their systems and you run your backend on their systems so all the data that you save on your website is being saved on some aws systems right so in the smart contract world these are systems owned by you and me so we can have a system and be a miner right we can operate a node on the ethereum network and what it basically means is we are giving our system capacity our storage and cpu power to the blockchain network to basically run smart contracts right and there is a software called ethereum virtual machine ethereum virtual machine is basically the main thing that the validator nodes have to run in order to run the smart contracts on the ethereum network and we are going to talk about mainly ethereum but the concept should apply in other blockchains as well but ethereum is sort of the first one to come up with the smart contracts and programmable money kind of a concept so that's why we're going over Ethereum and it's also the most popular one. So if you want to become a blockchain developer, you probably want to start with Ethereum. All right, before we get into the video, let me take a quick moment to thank ReLevel for sponsoring this video. ReLevel by An Academy is a platform that is meant to help you guys get placed in product companies without even having experience. So it is targeting freshers, people with zero to three year of work experience. Usually in my experience, I've noticed that if you go for off campus placements, which most people have to, especially if you're not coming from an IIT or something, because top companies go to these colleges to hire people but like from most other colleges you will find mediocre companies or in some colleges no companies ever come right so it's on you to find a great product based job for yourself and relevel is a great platform that will help you to do that especially if you don't have any work experience all you have to do is go to the link in description and register for a placement test so relevel test can be depending on your skills it can be a front end engineer test or a back end test depending on what you want to do and if you do well in this test relevel will send your candidate profile to these companies and they will come back to you with offers right so it's simple like that and they are providing an opportunity to everyone to get placed provided you're talented you will get placed and if you actually register for the test and get placed come back and let me know in the comment down below i would love to know how it went but having said that let's move on with the video so smart contracts are basically programs like think of it as your backend apis so you write a smart contract and then you deploy it on the main network or any like the blockchain network right what you're basically doing is you're giving your smart contract which is you write a program which gets compiled into bytecode bytecode is just an optimized version of your program that can be distributed to anyone and anyone who is running the ethereum virtual machine runs that bytecode will get the exact same output to the exact same input that's the that's the deal right so basically uh, you will write your ethereum smart contract you'll compile it when you're deploying that smart contract you're shipping that bytecode to all these nodes in the system who are running the ethereum network so now your program is on all these systems so any call that your front end makes to that api so let's say we are thinking about making a decentralized version of twitter so what you do in a tweet is basically you write a tweet on your phone and then you hit the tweet button it goes to the twitter servers twitter servers will actually save this in their database so instead of that in the decentralized twitter this will not be saved in the database but it will rather be saved on the blockchain itself in your program there has to be a function to save the tweet so that function will be called and my text will be sent to that function and that function will actually save the content of the tweet on the blockchain 
which means that multiple people on the network multiple nodes on the network will save the same tweet this process is called mining right what the servers the nodes are doing that's called mining so all these servers are going to take that tweet and save it in their in their system and now so there's a consensus right so if let's say there are there are 100 people in the network and all 100 of them have received my tweet and they have saved it and they have communicated yes we have saved it that means that that tweet is saved on the blockchain and it will remain there forever the most fundamental concept about the blockchain is that it is immutable my tweet you can consider it as a block that was added to the blockchain and it will forever exist there i cannot delete it now it is saved and it is saved in multiple systems around the world so i cannot edit it i cannot change it i cannot copy it i mean i can copy it and create a new tweet which will again be added on top of that but we cannot edit the one that is already saved and you can write functions on your smart contract to retrieve all the tweets to retrieve a count of tweets and like in the same way you can do money transfers right because like i said it is immutable if person a transfers money to person b Uh, then what happens is basically that transaction is recorded in the blockchain and then tra- that transaction cannot be edited so this person a cannot spend their money twice or like cannot do any any kind of scam with the money right it's sent and then that that transaction was verified by all the nodes and now it means that that transaction is complete it cannot be reversed so that's the whole concept behind blockchain and immutability and your smart contract is just an api server uh, not an api server really but an api endpoint you can kind of think of it as a few functions that comprise of your backend and then you deploy it on all the systems on the network and then they do the processing for you every time your front end calls that api it will call the smart contract that function runs on all these systems and verifies your whatever your smart contract logic says and adds the block to the blockchain and they have to store this data on the memory so the blockchain keeps getting bigger and bigger so that's why the mining becomes a very difficult issue over time and that's why today we cannot run the system on our laptop you need high end big sophisticated systems to run the blockchain uh, node basically if you'd started in 2009 with bitcoin you could actually mine bitcoin on your personal laptop but today people have huge factories of computers because as the time goes by the blockchain becomes more more and more big and complex and the mining becomes a difficult job and solidity is the programming language that you use to write all these smart contracts right in in the ethereum network at least and its syntax is very much similar to javascript which i'll show you in a bit so yeah i think this should give you a basic understanding of how the blockchain works and how the smart contracts work in general you can just to have the very simple picture you can think of your front end that remains the same like whatever you build with react or something but the back end is actually what is different right the back end is now a smart contract running on the network which will actually execute your code save your data return your data and all that stuff so you are essentially replacing your aws back end system with the network right where people like you and me can run nodes around the world and serve as the back end so when you're storing all this data for me when all these people are storing all this data for me and giving me renting their systems to me how are they making money they get a charge they get some money out of the maintenance right so miners get a fee so in ethereum gas fee goes to the miners and like they get compensated in eth which is the currency for ethereum network ether and or from bitcoin so basically these people get paid for the work that they do and that's how the network becomes viable otherwise for free how will how will the network survive like it's a huge network right now if there was not any compensation for the miners then the network wouldn't survive why will they give their cpu power why will they spend so much electricity and network bandwidth just for free right so that's why the cryptocurrencies are basically tokens that are used to make this network viable all these people are renting out their systems spending money on electricity on internet and stuff like that so cryptocurrencies were a means to compensate them for their service right eth the ether token or bitcoin was basically meant meant to do this but as far as history goes humans have always found a way to speculate on things that they think will increase in value cryptocurrencies became a natural target because it increases in value as the system grows as the network grows so then the cryptocurrency that is powering that network also grows in value so humans built exchanges and ways to trade on this so that we can you know trade and then speculate the price of this cryptocurrency further that's all it is right it's basically tokens that keep this network viable and make the blockchain work so this is my introduction as a software engineer this is how you need to see about cryptocurrencies and the investing part of it is there but like as a software engineer you and i can understand what is a cryptocurrency and now you can explain to someone what exactly a cryptocurrency is and how the blockchain works so now with that said let's dive into my laptop and maybe i can quickly show you guys about how that smart contract actually works how i defined a very simple smart contract and deployed it and yeah let's look into the code so let me show you a quick demo of what i've built and then i will just take you over the code and explain how this works in the smart contract but uh, basically this just has a text input box where you can write any message which is going to be the content of the tweet or the wave 
and then you click wave at me it will get added to the blockchain first you need to connect your wallet right so if i click on connect wallet it opens metamask which is the wallet that i'm using you can use any ethereum wallet so uh, let me just quickly authenticate with metamask and now metamask authentication is done so you can check the console right it can tell you that okay this is the wallet that is connected now we can just wave something but uh, first we need to write some message so let me write message uh, hello from ab cube right and i'll click wave at me and then it will open my metamask wallet for authentication because it's going to charge me some gas fee usually if you're making any transaction on ethereum then you're doing that but right now uh, it just needs the gas fee so i will click on confirm right and once i confirm it will start mining and the total wave count is nine at the time and like all the waves need to be rendered here right so uh, these are all the waves oh sorry i refreshed the page but anyway, yeah, that that uh, that's beyond the point. The reason why the waves didn't render at first is because I think in the in the use effect hook, I was checking for the for these things, and at the time there was no wallet connected. So on Ethereum, on the smart contract, you cannot do any transaction until you actually uh, you know authorize, right? So basically, until I authorized from MetaMask, it was not even able to fetch all these waves from the blockchain. But here we can see this new event just arrived, right? This is the new event that uh, that got emitted from the wave. I will show you the code that emitted this event. But this new event should add a wave. So hello from ABTube. This just came in, right? While we were talking, this new event came up and then this was added to the state. It's just simple. This is everything that is there on the blockchain. And if you keep adding more stuff, right now I can't add more stuff because I just uh, implemented a logic to prevent someone from spamming. So if I confirm this, it's going to fail because uh, there's a 15 minute timer that you cannot spam. Like once you add a wave for the next 15 minutes, you can't add another wave. So that's why it will fail. But I will show you in the code how this works. Okay, so here this is my GitHub profile and you can see both these uh, repos are public. You can just go into them and basically start working on it or you can clone it, you can play around with it, do whatever you want. I'll leave the links in the description, but uh, let me quickly show you the front end of the app, which is just a basic React app. You can just uh, run this on your local as well. It's just a single page, right? I just in the app component, I've written a few functions to check if the wallet is connected to get all the waves and to connect a wallet and then to actually send out a new wave. And then I'm just rendering the things that I showed you. And like, this is pretty standard, straightforward stuff. You can look at it. You can ask me if you have any more questions about this. I'm not gonna explain this because this is just the React side of things. But right now I wanna explain to you the Solidity side of things, right? Which is the contract itself. So this is the repo for the smart contract. And you can see there are two scripts to run and deploy. These are used in testing the contract on your local. But uh, here is the actual contract, right? You can see it has like waveportal.sol. That is the extension used by Solidity. So now let's just quickly go over this. So basically this is the Solidity version that we are using. And then hard hat is like a library that helps you to sort of, uh, you know, mimic the actual Ethereum network on your machine. And it's a, it's a whole framework that helps you with the development. But anyway, so this is the contract. This is how you declare a smart contract. And this is all there is, right? It, it's just this much code and that contains everything to do with the smart contract. You can see that the wave has two, two variables, which are called total waves and seed. These are integer u in 256 means that this is a 256 bit unsigned integer. That's the data type. Then there is an event. So in the front end, I show you, we received an event called new wave which contained the new event that was added to the blockchain in order to refresh my page, right? That is what this event uh, signifies. This is the structure of the wave itself. It's similar to the struct we had in C. It has three parameters, address, which is the sender address, then the message itself and the timestamp of this wave. And then using this struct, we have created an array of waves, so which will, which will contain all the waves. Now, all this is stored on the blockchain in, as a part of the smart contract storage. Then there's a mapping. Mapping is basically a hash map, right? Like similar to how we have objects or maps in JavaScript, we can create an address to integer map, which contains a timestamp. Basically, this is used to create the last wave at time, right? So I will know when you have actually submitted a wave, and then we can use this to create a barrier that you cannot wave again 
in the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever right this basically helps to prevent spam yeah so this is the constructor you can do a bunch of things here i just i'm just console logging that this has been constructed i'm not using the constructor explicitly but you can see that there's a constructor constructor is called it's the first thing that's called when the new uh, object is instantiated right this is the actual wave function that is the main function but before that let me tell you there are two more functions get all waves that returns the wave array and get total waves that returns the count of all waves now this is the main wave function right that is done doing the magic it takes one param which is the message string is the data type memory is basically the storage so according to documentation the ethereum virtual machine has three main uh, ways where it can store things and memory is one of them storage is one of them and then there's, there's a stack so storage is where all this is stored that is the smart contract storage this is more of a permanent storage right the, these things don't get deleted this memory is like a transient storage where this message parameter is currently stored during the execution of this function and then it is released right we don't need to keep storing this message all the time it will be saved in the waves array in this function but then it will be the memory for this function will be deallocated so if you look at the function this is the this is a constraint this is the invariant that i have put it checks for the last wave that message like if there is a last wave that timestamp then if it checks if 15 minutes have been elapsed since the last wave and if not it will not so invariant basically means that in order to reach this line in order to execute the line after this this condition has to satisfy right so if it doesn't satisfy then the execution will interrupt now here this is the last wave that that we are updating now we take the timestamp of the current block and update the last wave that this means that that person cannot wave again in the next 15 minutes now here we increment the total wave count which is we what we stored here total waves we increment it right and then we say that this person has waved and then we push that to the waves array here this the, you can see this is the wave constructor we are creating that struct that we defined message.sender is the address and then the message text and the block timestamp this is pushed to the waves array and this part is like a random so i i showed you that i have declared a seed variable which is basically used to declare uh, to create a random number you don't have to do this it's not important but what this basically is doing is it's generating a random number between 0 and 100 and based on that random number it is a 50 percent probability so if your random number generator is less than 50 you have one and then it will credit 0.001 ether to the sender right that's basically the logic i mean this is just on the test network but this is something that you can do you can play around with this smart contract and this is the event this is where emitting uh, where i'm emitting the event so the new wave is this event right that we defined here that event is emitted and the message dot sender block dot timestamp and message so this event is again emitted for the front end to catch right the front end will catch that event and update the ui accordingly i can show you that logic so well this is all about the smart contract and it's a very simple smart contract you can look at ethereum documentation you can you know play around with smart contracts and stuff like that uh yeah we portal front end let me quickly show you the event kind of stuff right so here ethereum has to be in scope right so you have to have an ethereum wallet for ethereum to be in scope if not, then you just raise an error that Ethereum doesn't exist. If it does exist, however, you can connect to the Ethereum blockchain and you can get the contract itself. So this is how I need the contract address and then I will fetch the contract and then I can call all the function on the contract. So wave portal contract dot get all waves. It will return all the waves that we have and then it will update the state accordingly. And this is the event listener, right? So wave portal contract dot on. So on receiving this event, uh, call this message, right? So when that event is emitted from the contract, this particular event listener listens to that event and then it saves the contract in the state, which updates the UI. And the wave function is similar. We will first get the wave portal contract from Ethereum and then we will uh, create a wave transaction where we will send the message, which is the input. And this is the options object, which just I'm just using to pass the gas limit but this is how you will call the wave functions on the wave portal contract and then the mining is done and we are waiting for the mining to complete and then once it completes we are again getting total waves and like logging stuff so that's all there is this is just a simple react app i thought i'll just quickly show you that as well and also show you the source so basically i learned this from build space build space is basically you know just giving credit where credit is due it is a website which is making crypto courses and stuff like that so you can learn about crypto and you can do their free courses everything is free so far so they're pretty cool i'm not sponsored by them but they're just doing good work they're teaching about crypto for free so yeah you can check them out as well all right that's it for this video i hope you liked this one if you did smash the like button leave a comment down below tell me what you think about this and tell me if you want me to make more videos about blockchain and stuff like that you can also follow me on instagram and twitter and my links will be in the description down below and that's it for this one thanks for watching